So first question I want to ask is, what's it like being here in Hawaii, seeing people play your game for the second time uh, since its announcement? So a lot of people have been playing the games at Gamescom and at Tokyo Game Show, and it really made me happy to hear that a lot of people played it and really, really liked it. As far as coming to Hawaii, I'm so glad the press could come out here and get to play all the way up to the third island and get to experience things that is the first time anyone in the press has experienced. Now, as a gamer, I would say I was presently su surprised by you know how well the game played and how diverse it was and the activities you could do on the island. But the thing I couldn't get away from was uh, your Twilight Princess type of feel that I had while I'm playing it. Was that was that an intentional thing? Was it an accident? Was it something you guys inspired to at Team Sega to kind of have that same aesthetic and feel? So Sonic has traditionally been a high-speed linear platform action game. And when we think about developing this similar game for the next 10 or 20 years, uh, we felt it's not going to really be enough to meet the needs of the player. Uh, and what people want is more freedom and ability to go wherever they want and do whatever they want. So that was really the idea behind what we created, which is the open zone format. Uh, and this open zone format, you know, has never been done before. Uh, we're trying to look at other titles out there in the marketplace and we couldn't find anything that had that linear platform action gameplay, but in like an open environment. Uh, and that's what we were challenged to do and that's what we ended up doing. Uh, so on, I know a lot of people look at our game and maybe they say, oh, it's an open world Sonic game, uh, but that's not really what it is. And we haven't seen a game like uh, Sonic Frontiers out in the marketplace ever. We haven't seen that kind of expansion on the, the 3D platform action, especially for Sonic, it's a high speed uh, platform action like linear game taken to this open environment and turned into something uh, new. So we really feel we're, we're kind of out there making something new and interesting with the open space. Now can you talk about, like I played it, but the people who didn't have a chance to play it, can you talk about the characters that you reveal today at the demo that people will interact with and help as Sonic uh, goes on his adventures? So as you see in the opening cutscene for Sonic Frontiers, uh, the adventure starts out with Sonic, Amy, and Tails. Uh, and as they go on their adventure, Amy and Tails are kind of lost and Sonic doesn't know where they've gone. So they, he does need to find Amy and Tails. But as he found on the second island, we run into Knuckles. Why is Knuckles here and what is he, why is he here is really a question that we're uh, you know, presenting the player. And we have an answer in the form of a short form animation that we will be releasing. And it goes into the backstory of you know, what Knuckles is doing here on the islands. But yes, as we talk about the main objectives of Sonic Frontiers, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy are all characters that Sonic needs to save uh, in order to progress in the story. Now, when, when you're writing the story, is it difficult to choose who's going to be involved in Sonic's adventure? Because he has so many allies and enemies, uh, you can't please everybody. So yes, when we talk about the characters, Sonic is obviously there, but his closest friends are really Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. So in the very beginning of the concepting phase, when we wanted to have a game about Sonic saving his friends. You know, from a branding perspective, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy are always there with Sonic. Uh, and when we talk about Sonic saving his friends, those three characters do immediately come to mind. So we wanted to put them into the main story. But kind of as fan service, we know a lot of people do like this character, so we wanted to find a way to slip Big the Cat into the story and have him appear on the islands. <laughs> And it's funny too, because no matter how many characters you put in, fans will always be like, well, you forgot this character, or where's Shadow, or whatever. Is, is that any difficult on your end from the design team to be like, we included everyone we could? So yeah, it really depends on the storyline and uh, what we need for not only the gameplay, but the storytelling happening. Uh, Sonic, of course, is uh, the key character that we need to uh, focus on, but kind of what characters support Sonic on the adventure uh, or on, in the gameplay? That always depends on the stories we want to tell and the gameplay that uh, we need. And if it's important for the story or for the game to have a character, uh, to have a character become part of the game, we'll definitely add them in. But it's really dependent on the story and the game. Now I got a lot of flack at my Summer Games Fest interview for not asking you enough about the story. And since you've done Tokyo Game Show and now this, what can you tell really eager fans that are chomping on the bits to really dive into the story? Like, what can you tell us new about what's going on with this world and Sonic and his friends? So yes, one of the very important points about the story is that when we arrive at the island, even Sonic himself doesn't know what he's doing there, uh, why Amy and Tails have been captured, uh, who's captured him, why they captured them. Kind of everything that's going on on the island, Sonic has no idea about. 
And part of the game, uh, the reason why we did it this way, is we want players to play the game and go on an adventure with Sonic and learn about what's happening on the island, learn about who's here, why they're doing what they're doing, and everything going on on the island as you're playing with Sonic, who also has no idea what's going on. So I don't want to talk too much about the story, details. I don't want to get into too much with people. And I want other people, when they buy the game and play the game, not to go and spoil a lot of the, the story elements, because the purpose of the game and the way it's being presented is for you to understand the story when you're playing it as along with Sonic. You're supposed to experience all the events that happen alongside Sonic as they're happening. Speaking of that, you do have an interesting new character that's very mysterious, uh, that's uh, Sage is, is, is treating Sonic almost like an enemy. Uh, what can you tell us about Sage? No spoilers, but what can you tell us about that character? So yes, the Sage is a very mysterious character, uh, and she's very kind of aggressive and antagonistic against Sonic in the beginning. Um, but we want people to kind of experience that, and as they're playing the game, kind of understand why does she tell Sonic to leave the islands in the very beginning? Why, why is she doing this? Why is she turning the Titans against Sonic? Um, these are all the mysterious elements about the character uh, that we want people to play and, and experience and get from the storytelling in the game. The, um, if I remember this right, the cyberspace levels uh, are very indicative of uh, Sonic Adventure 2. They hit me right in the heart there. Uh, and I saw, uh, you know, gameplay elements from like Green Hill Zone and other past Sonic games. Can you talk about this cyberspace zone and what players will experience when they run through them? Yeah, cyberspace is the digital projection and the kind of like the digital creation of things from Sonic's memories. So places like Green Hill Zone, Sky Sanctuary, the places Sonic has been before are being recreated as digital kind of environments for Sonic to run through. Uh, and because of that, it's really everything that he's experienced will kind of come out in cyberspace. Um, and that's a, it's a really big part of the game content. Uh, if we took out all of like the cyberspace levels, we could probably make just a standalone linear Sonic <laughs> game out of it. Uh, but the development team really want to take it even one step further. And uh, they wanted to make content that our fans would definitely pick up on a lot of the creative kind of Easter eggs that they put in there. So yes, it's obvious that, oh, this is Green Hill's owner Sky Sanctuary, but even some of the level design is taken and repurposed and put in a different format for people to kind of understand as an Easter egg and kind of a, a wink from the uh, game developers to the, uh, the fan audience. And this is the first time, and a Sonic fan will correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time we've seen Sonic have RPG-like stats, uh, ring capacity, speed, defense, attack. But what did that open up for your team creatively? So yes, Sonic is, you know, an action character in an action game. We're not doing a role-playing game uh, for Sonic Frontiers. But we did want to have, you know, Sonic being able to... We did want people to be able to clear the game using only the base skills that you have at Island 1. Uh, if you have the technical skills, if you have the play, uh, you know, technique, you can beat the game without leveling up or improving or adding anything to your uh, skill tree. But we did want to implement the skill tree and we did want to implement improvements to speed or health or defense uh, as a way to kind of give him more abilities, more things to do. Uh, he can run faster, he can boost uh, longer. Uh, these are all things that we wanted to kind of fortify and improve on Sonic's uh, abilities and factions that he can uh, partake in the game. Not just to make the game easier, although some people may find the game easier to level him up and have all these actions, uh, but it's not just to make it easier, it's really to also make sure people are going out and exploring the world and finding all these things in the world and having them give you some use in the game. So yes, you can go find Coco, uh, as something to do in the world and by finding Coco you get rewarded by you know turning them in uh, and improving your character so there's lots of things to do there's lots of things to explore uh, we wanted people to explore and have a fun time and we wanted to also reward them for finding all those things so like I mean like I said before I mentioned Twilight Princess but I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention Breath of the Wild uh, like inspirations on that with that intentional I feel like there's a lot of things that are very similar and that's not a bad thing it's a very good thing it's a great game uh, like the Coco, uh, like the Cocos, uh, which obviously are replacing the Chow uh, in in this in this game, uh, and like the the little mini puzzles you do. Like, were you guys inspired by Breath of the Wild at all to kind of create a, a very open, diverse environment with plenty of the with plenty for the player to do? 
So yes, from the you know development perspective, they're make they're going out and making an action game. So when they think about Breath of the Wild, like they see Breath of the Wild definitely as a role playing game, and it's not similar at all to the action game that they're making. Uh, you know, yeah, there is the the same freedom and element of freedom that has been applied to Breath of the Wild as a role playing game, uh, and they're making a, a linear you know they're taking the linear high speed action Sonic game and implementing freedom into there. But, you know, when we think about, is it an open world game? Is it similar to Breath of the Wild? You know, a lot of the people on the team love the Zelda series. They love Breath of the Wild. They've played it. But to them, they don't really see a similarity between the games. Your combat system is quite frankly amazing and really in depth. Uh, I feel like you can play that game just mashing X or you can master the skills and kind of do whatever you want. Uh, what went into that very in-depth combat system because Sonic has a ton of moves he can do, a ton of combos that he can trigger into that makes you feel very powerful. So yes, because we made an open zone game, we're taking that 3D, the linear 3D high speed platform action format and applying it to this open free area. Uh, we're really enabling people to do and players to do what they want to do and what they like doing. Uh, so we don't have linear story progression. If there's bosses out there that are very obviously there as something to do battle against, if you don't want to fight against the Guardians, you don't have to. There are other ways you can play through the game. You can go do high-speed action stuff and still be able to progress through the story. So because the bosses aren't necessarily required in order to progress through the story, if the bosses aren't fun in the first place, why would you even battle against them? That was kind of the uh, idea popping around in the heads of the development team. And they said, hey, all of the bosses we create have to be fun bosses. And in order to be fun bosses, we need to have Sonic be able to do fun things with the bosses in order to defeat them. Because if the bosses aren't fun and you don't need to defeat them in order to progress, why would you even engage them? So that kind of led to the development of the skill tree, that led to the development of the boss types and figuring out what the bosses are going to be doing, how are you going to engage them and win, uh, and what kind of actions can Sonic do to make this a really fun effort. And the team spent a lot of time and energy making sure not only the high speed action elements that are going to be key to the open zone world are in there, but the bosses are also created, designed and implemented in a way that work with the new Sonic and his battle system, so the battle is also fun. Now I have some fan questions here. So uh, the first question they had was like, uh, any plans for multiplayer or co-op play for Sonic Frontiers? Uh, no, Sonic uh, Frontiers is going to be exclusively a single player game. And um, where is Shadow? Will we see Shadow? We want Shadow. <laughs> is that a question? <laughs> no, where, where is the question? Yeah, no. We want Shadow. Then. I like Shadow a lot too, uh, and I want to work to bring a Shadow into our games. So he's not in Sonic Frontiers, but I would like to bring him into uh, more content in the future. And then you showed us three islands today. Uh, can you talk about any more islands we can explore as Sonic for the game's release? Five islands comprise the Starfall Islands. So there's still two islands that have yet to be spoken about. But as we, you know, this is an action game. And as we get to the end of the action game, these remaining islands are going to be a little bit more difficult. And we're going to be close to the end of the story. So things are really going to start uh, ramping up story-wise uh, in the game. So I'm going to be a little cryptic on this question because we weren't allowed to capture this footage. But when did Sonic do Dragon Ball Z better than Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> I'm referring to the Titan fight. It was just the punch and the... Like everything, it was like, this is amazing, this is incredible. <laughs> what is the question? <laughs> well, how are you doing Dragon Ball Z better than Dragon Ball Z is doing Dragon Ball Z? That's the question. How is this possible? What did you do? How did you nail that feeling of being so powerful? So, so Super Sonic has been in our game since 1992, and for every title we put Super Sonic in, we're always trying to make him stronger and uh, more improved than the previous version. So we've been iterating on Super Sonic for many years now. What are you most excited about for gamers to experience in Sonic Frontiers personally for you? So first and foremost, I want all of our Sonic fans who love all the games up until now, uh, you know, to enjoy the cyberspace levels because it is that, you know, linear Sonic platform action format with a time attack, you know, technical uh, speed and prowess. But we do want them to, I do want them to come in and enjoy the new open zone format that we created. Uh, and in addition, 
you know, Sonic games up until now have very much been uh, feeding the players kind of the next content that they're going to be consuming. So we go from one stage, you're given a stage, you clear the stage, and then right away you're given the next stage that you need to clear. Uh, but this is a different kind of format that we're now presenting gameplay in. Uh, and this new content allows you to kind of uh, freely roam around and explore uh, the world as you like. So I really hope that people get to, you know, not feel rushed, not feel like they need to rush through things and run as quick as they can, but really spend some time, take a walk around the island and explore and enjoy the game that we've created. But Sonic go fast, that's what he does. He's supposed to go fast. <laughs> Uh, my, my last question for you is, uh, Sonic's had a plethora of past games. Did your team look back and see what worked with past games and apply that to Frontiers? I, I mean, I, I bring it up again, Sonic Adventure 2, like, the muscle memory kicked in. I was pressing X to try to switch rails at one point because it felt so indicative of that game. It just felt so good, that rail, that rail sliding in 3D, that I was like, I had to, oh, just hit the thumbstick. I don't have to press X, just hit the thumbstick. Brought me back to glorious memories of that game on the GameCube. So yes, the development team in Japan, you know, we have a, a, a lot of different people on the development team in Japan. We have those who have been making Sonic games for decades now, and we also have brand new team members who this is their first Sonic game that they're creating. But because we have such a, a, a vast uh, variety of creator types, uh, of those who have been around for a long time and those who maybe have just joined, we do make sure that we're always going back and looking at the old games and looking at how they've improved and kind of learning from the past in order to better, uh, in order to better educate people for how to make great Sonic games in the future. Sonic Frontiers will be out November 8th on the PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and Steam platforms.